Well, I probably start off. Um, I'm, I'm actually originally from Durban in South Africa, and I moved to the present city that I'm in at the moment, which is Peter Marisburg, in 2000. And uh, through my situation, where I had one of the family members actually outed me and was uh, didn't uh, agree with my sexuality, and I was forced to move out of the house, and because uh, I had I was living with my parents and my brother that time. Um, and was forced to actually uh, move out of the house uh, because of my sexuality, uh, despite my parents and other family members uh, were, were, were fine with it. Just that there was one family member that was actually uh, against my sexuality. And so that was, for me, also was a bit of tra traumatizing for me. But then at the same time, it was a, um, a blessing in disguise because that actually helped me because I, there was no one I could actually turn to to help me. Um, but as time moved on, I was able to see there was a need for, because um, I also made contact with other LGBTI people at, at the university that uh, was in the that I was at, I was working at, um, and then also engaging with other gays and lesbian people in Peter Marisburg. And I saw the need for for us to actually start something and that's when I started the process to establish the organization and we had it registered with the Department of Social Development and get the constitution and, and, and that it was a process that started and that was started through then having safe spaces organized and events and then until such time that we were able to get our first funding in 2006 which actually assisted us to actually develop programmatic works as part of intervention to support and output our people. So, and yeah, that's how the way I've actually founded the organization. As for me, um, I, made I was invited in 2012 by a friend to attend a, a workshop. So it was my first time a sharing a room with more than three or a, 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 a many of a gays, a gay and lesbian people. So for me, it was the first time I, I was shocked. For the first time, I was shocked. I was like, because I didn't want to mingle with gay people because they said we have drama, we do terrible things. We are because I knew that gay people they, we are always associated with evil. Uh, evil things. So, but the time when I was invited, I met many gay people, and it was a, a, a sharing support group. And that time, in, in the in the time of my life, I knew that I I loved men, but I didn't understand who I was. But I then along the way, they started to do gender and sexuality. Then I understand. I, I understood that I am not just I am not just a, a, a male who is attracted to another male, but how I feel. I feel like I, I there's a, there's this girl on me that wants to flourish. And so GNN or rather gay and lesbian network, it gave me that opportunity to live and, and allow that girl in me to live. Then I, I and when I got that opportunity, then I grew, as, and as I was growing up emotionally, I understood, no, I am a woman. I am a woman of integrity. Then I understood later that, oh, I am a trans woman. So I would say Jaden has been, beside making me understand, taking me through a journey, because it's not a one day, it's a journey. You journey with people. That's what is more interesting about Jaden. You are gently, gently, again, that's the network, journey with you until you say, oh, this is where I am. This is who I am. So that's, that element that draw me closer and closer to Jalen and wanted to to offer my services more and more because I and beside understanding your journey, there were also health health sessions, support groups, and also behavioral change support groups. So it was not only about my sexuality, it's also about my health and my behavior, and also about the care, the, the assisting. Uh, assisting us in developing us 
in our career in our career ways or paths. So Jaden Gay and Lesbian Network for me, it has been that particular uh, home. It is a home uh, outside of my home. It, it was the, the home that understood me, a home where I could be vulnerable like nobody's business. Uh, it's a home when I, I knew that I would be I, I will be taken care emotionally if I have anything emotionally. I am free to, to share my frustration, my traumas. And I started also, also talking out and, and my secrets about my life and how I grew up, how it impacted me. So it's not just a, a, a safe space. For me, Gay and Lesbian Network, it is a home a home that all LGBTI are longing, even in rural areas, they are longing for such a home, even though that we don't have like a, a LGBTI orphanage or a, a LGBTI place where safer spaces or environment. But if you enter a, 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 in these premises, you will feel the spirit of, of love and non-judgmental. So, how you walked in, it should not be the same as when you're going out. So that's what I love about Gay Lesbian Network. It's the element of family. I, the, because now I'm not, because I'm also working now as an, a coordinator in the organization. So now I'm known in, in, in Guazulu Natal. So people, they would refer people to me for anything for psychosocial support or any other support that Mm-hmm. And also, I, I, I make sure because I know that I am a change agent. I am a, I'm also a, a, a brand. I'm also a, a you know, no, the, no, not the person, the the person. an ambassador of GLN, of Gay and Lesbian Network. So if I go out, I am marketing the Gay and Lesbian Network. So wherever I go in all the engagement that I invited, I make sure that I speak and I advocate on LGBTIQA plus human rights and also health needs and, and health accessibility. So they know me everywhere because even on my social network, I, uh, I'm very open about what I do and what I stand for. And also some other people, they will ask me to do a video for their social networks so I can speak more. Even in other places, they will invite me in closed in closed session to come and speak. Now I'm even invited on a general community to come and speak because when we, now when I'm doing a motivational speaking, I'm no longer, uh, speaking about LGBTI, but I, am, I I always tell them that sexuality, you must not box in because Gay and Lesbian Network is running away from all these boxes. So we're working with everyone who enters this premise regarding if you are homosexual or not homosexual. So we, so because we, as I said, it's a, it's, it's a family element organization. So when I do my presentation, I make sure they are inclusive of all people, so that make it easier for for them to come and also as, access the the services of GNN and also be able to reach out to me because I make sure I'm approachable and friendly and I'm and more informal in terms of engagement. Well, I think it's, it's grown a lot uh, in the sense that it's, it's, it's grown in, in, regard, in with regarding to our footprint, for example. We've managed to, because we initially started was in the city uh, of Peter Marysburg. Now we're actually all over our province of uh, KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, it's grown with regarding um, uh, the stocking we had before and it's grown in respect of um, uh, expanding to uh, to different stakeholders, we've actually developed relationships with, and so it's it's really grown to uh, to different parts of, of, of the organisation organically, um, 
and uh, we've also grown in, in the sense of actually attracting other donors to the organization and there are different stakeholders uh, we, we've we've partnered with different organizations and network and so it's, it's really grown to different parts of, of the uh, orga organically of, of, of the organization but i think uh I think that it focuses around around education, education, education. So it's really getting out there and getting the the word out into the into society, and uh, not being shy to be where we are, and and really uh, embracing everybody that we engage with, um, and to 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 show a, a positive side of of who we are, and and to be LGBT, um, and advocate a lot, and in order. To to bring about the change and, and to actually challenge it and to be part of a lot of structures like you'll uh, be part of a number of accountability structures so that we can have the voices of ourselves being heard um, and also to participate in a number of conferences and, 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 and seminars to bring the work of the organization out there and, and inform people about LGBT issues. Um, so we're very fortunate enough as well to, to grow the organization and we want to see ourselves because we have been approached by a lot of organisations nationally or individual LGBT individuals to help them start up uh, community-based organisations. And our aim, uh, our actual vision, is to actually to be part of the um, be part of Africa to be an organisation that is wanting to to support other organisations in Africa from our, the work that we've done to replicate it in parts of Africa. So. Uh, to this is our vision to to broadly to get um, the organisation uh, to other parts of Africa as well too, and to try and change the the mindsets within Africa as well, not just in South Africa. I think there are a lot like uh, our my personal slogan that I all, all always like um, encourage or push is that the, the slogan of nothing for us without us so and i wish that to see in all accountability structures i want to see uh, the the representation of lgbti's in all the government sectors uh, private sectors and ngo sectors to see the representation of LGBTI. I am forward with the mandate of saying LGBTI should be visible. We, are, we need to be visible in all corridors. We need to be visible. That is our, our, ut, our utmost or the, our deepest, uh, deepest goal is to see the vis increment of visibility of LGBTIs in all the structures. Spilele, uh, she's a traditional healer, and this is one of the uh, other stakeholder, stakeholders or in the people that we also engage with. Because uh, we, uh, we also work in, as I mentioned, in, in deep rural areas, so we engage with also traditional leaders, but we also engage with traditional healers because the African community, they when they consult with um, because they don't consult with your, your normal, your Western sort of your doctors and things like that, but they also deal with your tradi traditional ways of uh, life as well. So Spilele, she's actually been, uh, I mean, she's a qualified um, traditional healer. So that is quite a phenomenal thing within the organization. But as a, as a whole, we also engage with them as well. In my story, uh, I, I, I never had um, a silver spoon. I had my mother was was very homophobic because she would use labels, she would use mean words to refer to me. But I had to embrace those things and, and move on because because uh, I didn't understand at that time my, my understand the understanding of LGBTI and me. And also the, the relatives will come in and also bully me in front of her. And, and also the outside neighbors will bully me and she will not have a problem. She would add on top of what other people are saying bad about me. So I had to 
take it like it's 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 a it, 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 it's a my daily living. So I knew it's my daily living. So I knew I I, I was not entitled to ex, uh, to happiness at that particular time. But when I when I was growing up. I knew that I w- my my first goal was to have a metric. I said regardless of what was happening, I needed to have a metric. Then I did get metric through because I I went to other other families to seek for 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 protection. So I had to live in numerous number of families seeking for uh, for protection and also asking them to take me to school. That uh, it resulted that I attended six schools in my entire life and I, I've i lived with more than 10 families in my entire life. So it, when I was growing up, I, I knew that if I can get a, a, a one, like just one, a piece of peace job, then I knew that I I'll, then it, 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 my road is starting. Then along the way, and when I joined GLN, when I joined Gay Investment Network, and along the way, I then the calling, the ancestral calling, and also presented itself to me. And I didn't understand because I didn't understand what, why the, the ancestral calling is pointing at me because. I am a gay person. I am attracted to another same sex because because I, I knew they say they used to say to me I I, I I am the result of the anger of ancestors. So I was like, why now these angry ancestors would like to use me or, 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 or on on their spiritual work? But then it took me so because I needed to speak directly to them. So I had other people who assisted me on how to better communicate with my ancestors before entering the court, before we went to the initiation. But I had to talk to them before that. I am a different people. I am a different person. To my surprise, is that when you when you have the ancestral calling, the ancestors there, there, there is no gender that is embraced. There is no sex that is embraced. They embrace the human. So to them, they said, we are interested to you because you are a human. The other elements are not in, 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 in we are not interested. So I was shocked that even in the ancestral world, this, this boxing is not it, it, it's not happening, but I didn't understand why in, in our in our daily lives it's so working. It's so like an ish thing. So it's like something that is, should happen. But along the way, I'm grateful that I I, I I also attended my ancestral calling because now I'm I'm able to advocate for LGBTIs to not to be bullied when they are going to, for consultation to to other traditional healers. So we have we we, we organize workshops uh, with a, a, a traditional leaders and also traditional healers on explaining the different types of people and how gender identities influence the dress code and the behavior so to, to better to ask to, in order to make them to be at ease with the other people because some people were being chased out when they go to traditional healers for consultation they will be chased out or will not be given help so they will be also being initiated for and they say they are cleansing them of the, the, the homosexual demon, there will be rituals that will be performed, horrible rituals that I have never seen that will be performed because they say they are extracting out the demon of homosexual, homosexual in them. So my my work as an outreach coordinator, it, 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 it extend into the spiritual world to also advocate for LGBTIs and also advocating for traditional healers who are also homosexual that to be taken serious and also to be also have an easy access to 
every department or in all, all the corridors within their communities.